in people's lives, there's only maybe a half dozen, seven, eight categories that really matter. Most people, you know, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. They know more about this celebrity going in and out of rehab than they do about their own personal development. If you can find within yourself the part of you that wants to, to constantly give something more than yourself, if you can find a mission larger than yourself, then you're more pulled to do something than trying to push yourself. And pull has much more power than push. I always say motive does matter. That if, you, if your motive is to serve something greater, there is an energy that comes up inside of you. But I look at, say, if you look at your body, without that, everything else is out the door. You don't want to be richest man in the graveyard. That's not going to do it. If there is energy, if there's vitality, if there's strength, it's going to show up in your relationship. It's going to show up in your business. It's going to show up in your life. That's an area you got to master. You can't dabble. It's too important. Emotions are everything. The fact that human beings, our strongest drive is the need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. So while you're in this passionate state, that's where you make decisions. I, I, I became Mr. Solution because I wanted to help everybody. So I was this little fat guy and I couldn't lose weight and I lost weight. All my buddies are like, how'd you do that? And I said, well, here's what I did. They lost weight and we all got girls. And, and <laughs> that led to, as a young kid, you know, that led to where, you know, if you had a problem, I was Mr. Solution, especially if you're a girl, I was more motivated to help you. So the breakthrough was really understanding the power of compressing decades into days. And if someone has spent decades of their life and they compress it into a book, and you can read it in an hour or a few days, you have such an advantage. Because when you learn by your own experience, it's painful and it's slow. When you learn by other people's experience, everybody knows in the financial world, other people's money is leverage, right? Well, other people's experience is more powerful than other people's money. Because you can have the money and lose it. But if you get the experience, you can change it all. So I think that was the beginning for me. And it set me on a lifelong path of hunger. And I've never lost my hunger. So if you want to change your life, my friends, You've got to change your physiology and you've got to change your focus. But think about it. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you just say, I'm going to find the way or I'm going to make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard, they make it a must, they find the way. I'd like to ask you to take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation. You might see it as just, that's who I am. But so often in our lives, we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. There's no secret to success. There's a system to success. And no matter what organization you become a part of, the system works if you work it. If you don't work it, it won't work. But it works if you work it. And that's one four-letter word that most people don't like. They're not willing to work. I have a friend who invited me to her brother's house to help him to get off drugs, to introduce him to a drug program that can help him. And, and I said, these people can help you, but you've got to be willing to do the work. And after we finish, he asked us to leave. And I'll never forget what she said as we were going down the steps. She said, Les, I do apologize for wasting your time, but I realized when my brother knew that it would require work for him to get off drugs, that most people won't participate in their own rescue. And there are people who will be presented with an opportunity, who know that they could be laid off at any moment, who know that there's no such thing as job security, who know that them keeping their job has nothing to do with how good they are. And yet and still, they'll go to work and have knots in their stomachs hoping when they open up an email that they have not been told this is your last day. They'll go to work hoping there's not a security guard standing by their desk with a box and say, empty your things in here and take them to the front door and escort them to the parking lot. They go in there hoping it doesn't happen. Why? 
because they don't want to do It's an aversion to most people's spirit. What I learned from that is, many times you will have angst and worry about things and put yourself in a state, like someone said this morning because their phone went off, they were mortified over a phone, I said, really? Um, you will put yourself in a state when the other person really isn't even thinking about you. So learning that I could specifically determine for myself what the boundaries were for me, what I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get 100 requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate. The captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do, but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me. We'll see a lot of times people will say, but, but I don't know what to do next. I just don't know. I don't know what to do. How, how do I learn how to do this? Who's going to teach me? I don't have a mentor. I don't have money. I don't have this. Look, today we have access to more resources than we've ever had in our lives. How to do anything. Blogs, vlogs, YouTube. There is so much access to resources that we don't need to act helpless. We act like victims, but it's not my fault. She did it. It's my mom. You don't understand my dad. My, 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 my sister was this. My brother was this. My ex, my boss, my... It, it, it's just, it's not my fault. It's the economy, the market, the place I live, the city, the place I grew up, the school I went to. Everything is somebody else's fault. Effort has to be incisive in the sense. It should be focused, calibrated. So we believe you make effort. It's foolish effort, isn't it? Just labor is not going to get you somewhere. Right kind of action, the right timing, right place, all this is important, isn't it? So, for all these things to happen, you need perception and intelligence. So that's all you must do in your life, constantly looking for ways to enhance your perception and your intelligence. The rest will anyway happen. This is one thing that unfortunately humanity is not doing. They're trying to become capable of something. Do not try to become capable of something. Just enhance your perception and intelligence. Uh, when Josh was, uh, um, he had a 60 hour a week job and he was doing QLA 70 hours a week. That doesn't give him much room for sleep, does it? But you'll say, well, he was 17, 18, you don't need sleep when you're 17, 18. You've already, you already got a reason why he, you can't work 130, 40 hours a week, that you need sleep. He cut back to three hours a night's sleep, the guy you just listened to, and then he couldn't take it. He only lasted a few weeks at three hours a night's sleep, and so he had to go back to four hours. When you know, it's like when you were in lust with that person, you know, you wanted to f all night in the toilet, in the car, in, in the closet. Or, yeah. When you, f when you figure out that every hour you sleep, you're not making money, you'll never sleep again. The discipline I had to get into was I was paying myself first, even when I had no money. And when I have all these bill collectors calling me, I use them as inspiration. <laughs> you know what I really? mean? Really? Oh, when they're hounding, the government's hounding you, bill collectors calling, because I've been broke, so I can, you know, understand what it feels like to be broke. When those guys are calling you, instead of you know, shrinking and going into the shell and eating my pizza. Yeah. I use it as motivation to go out and make more money. So I use it, I use my bill collectors as motivation. And that's why I paid myself first, even though sometimes what I was What would you pay yourself? 
I always bought assets. I'd buy a house or I'd put money in the bank or things like this. But uh, it was just a habit. It was exactly what you're talking about. It's up here. It's about changing the way you think. You that's the, what the whole book is about. That's it. Because we're our biggest asset. We're also our biggest liability.